Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. Today is one of my favorite days of the year, and that is the day that we start the first seeds. Now, we did actually do a little bit of winter sowing together earlier in the season. I'm not sure, you might be able to see some of my milk jugs filled with winter sown seeds on the deck behind me. But today's the first day that we are starting some indoor seeds. Now, admittedly, I am a little bit late with this this year. We actually just got back from vacation, and I did have some video schedule that posted while we were gone, so that's why you continue to see videos. But I wanted to wait to start my seeds until we got back from vacation, so today we're going to go ahead and start the first seeds. This isn't going to be a real comprehensive how-to guide to starting seeds, although I will share with you what I'm doing. Last year I did film a video that was more of, like I said, just the step-by-step -step how to, really all the stuff you need to know about starting seeds. So I will link that video in the video description in case you're interested in that. Today I figured we would just hang out and start some seeds together. So today I'm going to be starting my peppers. They take a fairly long time to germinate and to grow, so I wanted to get a little bit of a head start on those. As I said, I normally would have started those a week to two weeks ago, but I didn't want to have to have somebody else baby my seedlings while we were gone. Also, we are going to be starting some brassica seeds today. The reason why those are some of the other first seeds that I start is because those are cold hardy plants. They can go out in my area around mid-April. That's about a month before my last frost date. So when they go out in your area, will probably vary a little bit depending on your individual climate, but in my area, they go out about mid-April. So I wanted to give them about a four to six week head start before it's time for them to go out. So we're going to go ahead and start those today. Now, as you can see, I have my containers prepared. I did go ahead and pre-label all of these. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. So these are some various brassicas, mostly cabbage and kale. And then in here, I've got peppers. So I'm starting these seeds in a couple different kinds of containers. For some of my cabbages and kales, you can see I'm starting them in these little six packs. These are basically six packs that I'm recycling. These, in the past couple years, you know, even though I start a lot of seeds myself, there's always something that I forget to start or something that I see at the local nursery that just calls out to me. So I do buy occasional plants from my local nursery and I always like to save the pots that I get those plants in for seed starting. So these are just flimsy little plastic, but I figured I would give them just a second purpose by using them to start some of my seeds. So all of the brassicas that we're starting right now are going to be in recycled six packs. And here, my peppers are going to be started in pots like this. I did purchase these because these are really heavy duty pots and I wanted, if I was going to spend my money on something, I wanted to just spend my money on something that was going to really last and not have to be thrown out after a season or two. So that's what I'm starting the season. Now for the peppers, you may have noticed that I only have one pot labeled with each variety that I'm starting. I'm going to be starting multiple pepper seeds in each of these pots, and then I'm going to be transplanting them out to their own pots, probably about when they get their first set of true leaves. The reason that I like to start multiple plants in the same pot is for a, for a few different reasons. One is, and probably the biggest reason, is that it saves me a lot of space. By the time my peppers are ready to be transplanted into their own pots, some of these cold weather plants will be starting to get hardened off out on my deck and that will free up a little bit of space under my grow lights for me. The other main reason is that it does, I feel like it does tend to conserve some seeds for me. What a lot of people do is they think of how many plants of each variety they want to grow and then they'll prepare that amount of pots and put usually about two seeds of each variety or two seeds in each pot of that variety the reason is that there isn't always 100% germination and you really do want to make sure that you have the number of plants that you're hoping to grow. The reason I do it this way is because that way I can grow, a, I can plant a couple more seeds than what I'm hoping to grow, but by knowing that I'm going to be transplanting the plants out, so say for example, if I want to grow, so say I want to grow four plants of the Jalafuego variety here. If I was planting them all in individual pots, I would probably end up using about eight seeds, two per pot. But by putting them all in the same pot, what I'm going to do is just use six seeds, and then I'll transplant out the four strongest plants. And I mean, honestly, who are we kidding? I'm gonna transplant out probably everything that germinates. And if I end up with extras, then my friends and family may get some little gifts of seedlings. So I find that that saves me a few seeds. It saves me, while it is a little more labor intensive, down the road to transplant all those plants, I do find that it saves me a little bit of time right at the beginning, and that's just what works for me, so that's how I do it. 
You'll see a little later, I do my tomatoes the same way. Now, the brassicas, I'm not giving them a real lot of space. They're just going in these six-pack containers. And all the brassicas that I'm growing, I have plenty of seeds of those. So we're just going to go ahead and plant them that way. So I'm going to start here with my blue curled scotch kale. So basically in each little cell of the six pack here, I'm going to put two seeds and you're going to want to refer to your seed packet for exact sowing directions. So on your seed packet, it's going to tell you pretty much everything that you need to know to start that particular variety. One thing that you're going to be looking for is seed depth. So for example, this says to plant my seeds about a quarter inch deep. I find that you don't need to be incredibly precise about that. I'm not going to get out my ruler and measure or anything like that, but I'm going to estimate about a quarter inch. There is a reason that a specific depth is given for each seed. So basically when you first plant a seed, it takes a certain amount of energy for that seed to sprout and for the leaves to reach the surface. Once those leaves reach the surface, they break the surface of the soil, they're exposed to sunlight, they can start making more, more nutrients, more energy for that plant. But until the leaves reach the surface, they only have the amount of energy that's stored in the seed. So you do want to make sure not to plant them too deep. Otherwise, what can happen is that the seedling could run out of energy before it reaches the surface. Now, on the other hand, if you plant it too shallowly, what may happen is that the seedling or the seed coat won't be able to absorb the amount of water or the amount of moisture from the soil that it needs to germinate. If you plant it too shallowly, it's easier for the surface of the soil to dry out and your seed might not be able to absorb enough water and therefore might not be able to sprout. Additionally, some seeds have other sowing requirements, like some seeds need darkness to germinate, which would mean that you would want to completely cover them with soil. Some seeds need light to germinate and they'd be sown right on the surface. That's all information that should be on the seed packet of whatever you're sowing. A lot of times the seed packet will also tell you things like when to sow it, usually about however many weeks before your last frost date, or sometimes it'll say direct sow after last frost. Basically, in this little seed packet here, this is a little space and most seed companies are able to really squeeze a lot of information into that little space there and it's really going to be helpful. So you definitely want to pay attention to your seed packet. It's also going to give you some other little tips for when you eventually transplant these seedlings that we're going to start out into the garden. It'll tell you things like plant spacing. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get started with the outside garden. I'll tell you my thoughts on plant spacing. But for right now, this is a really good guideline to follow. It'll also tell you things like the ideal temperature for germination. Honestly, I don't really worry about that too much, except in the case of a couple plants which do like warmer temperatures. Peppers do really like warmer temperatures, so we'll talk about that when we get to the peppers. It'll also tell you how long how long that the plant typically sprouts in, so that'll give you an idea of when to expect to see your little seedlings first break the soil. So let's get started planting our kale. So as I mentioned, this kale likes to be planted about a quarter inch deep. So right here, I'm just going to make a couple little divots in each cell and then just drop a seed in each divot. So I find that I like to make the divot with one finger and touch the seeds with the other. That prevents moisture from the soil from getting on the seeds. That way if I have any extra seeds left in my hand at the end of this, they can go back in the packet because they haven't been exposed to moisture. So you can see I'm just going ahead and making all of these divots. Go ahead and put the extra seeds back in the packet. Then I'm just going to lightly smooth the soil on top of them to make sure that they're covered. And that's how easy it is to get started with seeds. So we've got the blue curled scotch planted. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant the rest of this tray out with the rest of my kale and cabbage varieties. And then we're going to get this tray under the grow lights. So a couple of other things I realized that I probably should have mentioned before we actually got started. One is that I did pre-moisten the soil before planting any seedlings or before planting any seeds. I did fill all of my containers with pre-moistened soil. When you're starting seeds, or when I'm starting seeds anyway, I find it easier 
rather than watering the seeds after they're planted, I find it easier to pre-moisten the soil and then just plant my seeds. That way I don't have to worry about watering the soil and potentially dislodging the seeds once they're planted. So the ideal moisture level for seed starting is you want your soil to be pretty evenly moist. You want to be able to take a, a handful of it and squeeze it. You want it to hold its shape. You want it to have enough moisture that it'll hold its shape, but you don't want it to have so much moisture that water is dripping out of it when you squeeze it. So that's about the ideal moisture level for starting seeds, and we're going to try to maintain a similar moisture level to that as these germinate. The other thing I want to mention is that I am using, there are lots of different options for soil for starting your seeds. You'll find lots of potting mix and other things like that labeled specifically for seed starting at your local box store, your local nursery, wherever it is that you purchase soil. You'll also find a lot of options labeled potting mix. There are a couple primary differences between that. One is that potting mix tends to have nutrients in it where seed starting mix usually doesn't. Another is that seed starting mix often tends to be a lot finer than potting mix. So when seeds first germinate, they have really fine roots. And sometimes if there's chunks in potting mix, it can be a little difficult for the roots to, to penetrate the soil. That being said, I always use potting soil to start my seedlings. I do make my own potting soil and that way I can make sure that it's also really fine. But I also like my seedlings to just have the nutrients right from the beginning. I do have a whole video on that that I made last year, which I can link below. I don't want to go into that now and make this video really long, but I just wanted to let you know that's what I'm doing. So the potting soil that I'm starting my seeds in today is the same as what I made in that video, except that I did additionally add some mosquito bits. You can see these little brownish, little brownish pieces at the top of the soil. Those are mosquito bits and they're really good at controlling fungus gnats. Basically, how it works is that the mosquito bits contain a dormant form of a certain, I think it's a bacteria, it's some sort of microorganism. I'll look up what type it is and put the name on the screen here. It's a similar microorganism to what you'll find in BT, which if you're familiar with that, that is pest control for caterpillars. So if your kale is getting eaten by cabbage worms, you can spray it with BT and that will, that will target just caterpillars and that will protect your kale. Now, this, this variation of that microorganism targets mosquito larvae, but it also targets fungus gnats. So fungus gnat larvae tend to live in the soil and they can be a really big problem with starting seeds inside. And usually how I control them is I take the, the little mosquito bits, I soak them in water, and then I use that water. I'll soak them overnight and then the next day I'll use that water to water my seedlings. This year I'm seeing if I can prevent a problem at all by, or in the first place, by mixing the mosquito bits right into my soil. So I'll definitely keep you updated on how that works, but that is the one change that I made to my potting soil recipe this year. I am gonna go ahead and get the rest of this tray planted and then we'll move on to peppers. So this tray is all planted. I've got early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, parsley, purple alyssum, red Russian kale, Savoy cabbage, blue curled scotch kale, Dazzling Blue Kale, and then I've got two six packs of this Aspa Brock, which is a sprouting broccoli. The sprouting broccoli is new to me. This is my very first year growing it, or any sprouting broccoli. So I am curious if you've grown that one, how has it done for you? And also, do you have any good recipes using that, or recipes using any sprouting broccoli? Because as I said, it's new to me. So this tray is done. We are now going to move on to our peppers. So I'm going to plant these peppers basically the same way I planted the brassicas. I'm just going to refer to my seed packet for the sowing depth. This one here you can see says a quarter inch as well. Generally, there are some exceptions, but the general rule of thumb is that you want to plant your seeds about twice as deep as the seed is wide. So if you're ever left with seeds that don't have a seed packet, maybe seeds that you saved yourself or seeds that you've been given by a friend, that's the general rule of thumb to follow. Obviously there are exceptions, but you can't go too far off following that rule. So we are going to just start sowing our peppers exactly the same way. The only difference is that, as I mentioned, in these individual pots here, I'm going to be sowing, for example, this one is Jalafuego. I'm going to be sowing seeds for all of the Jalafuego plants that I want in this pot. As I mentioned, we'll be transplanting them later. So I'm actually hoping to grow four Jalafuego plants this year. I'm going to be sowing six seeds in this pot because that way if I don't have perfect germination, I should still get my four plants. I am going to 
be a little more careful about spacing them because I do want to be able to separate these seedlings. So I'm probably just going to do like two little rows of three down the side or, you know, something like that. I'll just, I'll just kind of wing it as it happens, but I'm going to try to space these out enough that I should be able to separate the plants pretty easily without damaging them. So you can see this is what the pepper seeds look like. They're still fairly small. They're kind of flattened. So we're just going to take six of these and sow them right in this pot here. I'm just gonna do the same thing where I make the divots with one finger and touch the seeds with the other. That should prevent any moisture getting on these seeds. So all the extras can go right back in the seed packet afterwards. And then I'm just gonna brush the soil on top of them just like I did for the other plants. So I'm just going to plant the rest of my peppers. I'll meet you back here when we're done. While we're on the topic of planting peppers, I should also make a note. Recently, I did make a video sharing all the pepper varieties that I'm growing this year. Of course, since that video, I have added one variety. I am not actually starting that one today because I just ordered the seeds for it. They're on the way and they haven't come yet. So I'll be planting that one as soon as it comes. But in that pepper video that I did, a lot of you highly recommended the giant Marconi pepper. And it sounded like such a good pepper that I was planning to grow it next year. And then I was like, you know, maybe I'll try it this year because I'm growing the original red Marconi. So I thought it might be nice to grow them side by side and compare. While I was looking at seeds for the giant Marconi, I came across another version of that called the mega Marconi, which is basically a dehybridized version of the giant Marconi. The giant Marconi is a hybrid which means that if I grew it and then saved seeds from it, I wouldn't be guaranteed to get from those seeds the same plant that I grew. But a breeder has been working on dehybridizing the giant Marconi and the mega Marconi is basically like an offshoot or the offspring of the giant Marconi. So I decided to actually try that one instead because I have been really trying to shift gears and be a little more conscious of saving seeds. While I do grow some hybrids, I like to grow primarily heirlooms and open pollinated plants that I can save seeds from. So I will let you all know how the Mega Marconi does. Of course, since I'm not growing the Giant Marconi as well, I won't be able to really give you a side-by-side -side comparison. But it did sound like the Mega Marconi, from what I was reading, seems to be a fairly new variety. So I'm really excited to try that and to see how it does. I finally got all those pepper seeds sown. So they are ready and they are going to start growing for us. Now I did mention with peppers, it has definitely been my experience that peppers germinate better, they have a higher germination rate, and they also germinate more quickly if they're given heat. So I do like to start my pepper seeds on a heat mat. Now that being said, I did grow peppers for many years before I ever invested in heat mats, and they did grow. It just took them a little bit longer and I didn't get quite as high germination. So I definitely recommend a heat mat if that's something that you have, but definitely don't let that deter you from growing peppers if you don't have one because they still grow fine without a heat mat. I am going to take these pepper plants or these pepper seeds, I'm going to get them started on the heat mat and get them started growing. I will definitely update you on the progress of these seeds and as we start even more seeds, I'll update you on that as well. Also, if you are interested in seeing how I split up these seedlings, super, super easy but we will get to that once they're growing. So definitely check back if that's something you're interested in. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and starting seeds on one of my favorite days of the year. I hope that you are really excited about getting your garden started as well. I hope you're having a great day and I can't wait to see you soon. I'll see you next time.